The chorus effect. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It could be argued that it's one of the more overused effects. I probably fall somewhere in the middle where I also believe in certain eras of music, maybe it was overused and maybe in not so tasteful a manner. But I also feel that it can be a really useful, beautiful effect for creating certain, shall we say, soundscapes if the music calls for it. So as with a lot of effects in the Helix, we have a lot of options when it comes to chorus and sometimes it can be quite confusing. I receive a lot of questions from folks who say, you know, what chorus should I use? What's the best chorus? And again, you know, I hate to ever throw this term around best or worst because that's highly subjective and really depends on what the final outcome the user is looking for. That's really what's going to determine what's going to be best for anybody. But I think if we go into choosing which chorus effect we want to use with a little more knowledge, a little more education, then that could make our job of choosing the proper one for the situation a little more effective. So today we're going to take a look at all of the different chorus effects that we have in the Helix and kind of see what each one can do. Not really diving into the specifics of each one because I have done videos on the specific features of a lot of them, but more in comparing how they're different, listening to how they're different. But first of all, I want to take a minute and show everybody what exactly a chorus effect is, because I think a big part of this is understanding what a chorus is doing rather than just throwing a chorus effect on, having no idea what it's doing, just with sort of a vague idea of what it sounds like when we put a chorus on. So let's go over to HX Edit, and first of all, we'll take a look at what a chorus is actually doing to our tone. All right, so here we are over at HX Edit, and I have a, a bizarre looking little preset I set up, and I have three snaps. I have no chorus, chorus, and chorus two. Now, first and foremost, I want to answer the question, what is a chorus? Well, a chorus is basically going to be taking our original, let's call it dry signal, and it's going to split it into a second version of that. It's going to leave the first unaffected version alone. We're going to have our dry track or our dry version. And then it's going to process the second version it created with delay and pitch shifting. Now that can be done in a number of ways and I don't really know exactly how the different companies are accomplishing this and it doesn't really matter. But I think my demonstration here will just give you the idea of some of the things they might be doing to accomplish their chorus sound. So the second copy of the dry signal that the chorus is gonna be working on, I mentioned is going to be pitch shifted and delayed. So what I've done here is I have this no chorus snapshot, which is just basically this matchstick channel one tone. I think that's just the default settings that it comes up with. Now, once I switch here to chorus, you'll notice here that I used a split block, uh, split a B block to be more specific. Now you'll notice that when I switch from no chorus, it's all of the A path. So it's just A100. We're not hearing any of this split path. But when I switch down here to chorus, I have it as an even split. So now we're getting our dry unaffected signal up here, but we're also splitting it off and we're processing it. Now you'll notice I have a delay block here that's turned off. We'll talk about that in a second. What I did do is use a simple pitch block though, and I have the interval set at zero. You'll notice I have the sense set at minus 20, and we'll, you'll notice it's also highlighted here with the brackets around it in white. Uh, and that's for good reason we'll talk about in a moment. You'll notice I also delayed it by 25 milliseconds. So I've delayed it, and I'm adding some pitch shifting to it, very subtle, much in the way a chorus would do. I've put the shift level at 10 and mix at 100 because I want this sound to have no dry sound because we're already mixing it with the dry sound up here. Okay, so now what we should hear is a subtle chorus style effect. Here it is with no chorus again. Now, ideally, I would be wanting to use a poly pitch effect here to, to not have any of those artifacts as I'm using multiple notes. So what you probably notice is a subtle chorus style effect. Now, the other thing is with the chorus, you'll notice that most chorus have what they call rate and depth. So you might ask what those mean. This simple example I gave isn't really the full story because with a chorus, that second path or that second affected signal is also going to have a low frequency oscillator oscillating the effect. So it could have it so that it's constantly varying 
the sense of the affected path. So what you'll notice is that I've assigned this to expression pedal two, and I've come over to my bypass controller assign, and I have it at minus 20 and plus 20 as my minimum and maximum settings. So what this will do is when I move my expression pedal, it'll modulate, shall we say, between minus 20 and plus 20. So now if I play with this and use my foot to modulate this pitch, you're going to get more of what an actual chorus is going to be. Mind you, the oscillation is probably gonna be more steady than what my foot is doing. And this would be controlled by the rate control on most chorus pedals, and that's gonna be how fast it switches between this. If I go very quickly, that would be a very fast rate. If I go very slowly, it's gonna be a slow rate. So let's see what that sounds like when I move my expression pedal between those settings. That's starting to have a more traditional sound of what a chorus effect does. And I find this is a good way to illustrate for folks who don't understand what a chorus, but I know a lot of folks out there do understand it. So for those, we can just skip over this whole section if you so desire. Now, what about the depth control that's on most chorus effects? Let's say I came in here and I changed this instead of minus 20, let's say to minus 30 to plus 30. Now that would be equivalent to having a wider depth. So the rate is gonna be how fast it modulates between those two extremes, and the depth is going to be how far away those extremes are. Let's listen to what this sounds like. Now, if I go nice and slow between those, it doesn't sound so warbly. So again, the rate is how fast it moves between those two settings and the depth is going to be how far apart those settings are. Now you can also see though, by changing the delay setting too, we can also change the sound. So now we can understand how the companies are designing their course and they have different parameters they can use to give different sounds. So depending on what settings they chose for these different parameters, it's gonna give us different sounds as we can hear. Now, a second way we can do this would be to combine it with a delay that's also going to alter the pitch as we move the delay time. Um, so this is a transistor tape that if I move the delay time, the pitch also fluctuates. So I'd be modulating the delay time, which in turn would also be modulating the pitch. And this one would sound a little different, something like this. <laughs> Again, comparing that to just the dry sound. So that's a number of ways that we could accomplish this chorus effect. Now it'd be really silly for us to do this manually when we have some really great chorus effects built right into the helix. So now that we understand what a chorus is doing, let's dive over and take a look at the different possibilities we have within the Helix. Okay, so here I have a little preset called Helix Chorus, and I've taken the same matchstick channel one amp. Now you'll notice I have seven snapshots. I have the no chorus one, which is just this tone. Nice little tone, great amp model in the Helix. Then I go through all the different choruses we have. We have the chorus effect, which is the Line 6 original. We have the 70s chorus. We have the plastic chorus. We have the Ampeg liquefier, and we have the Trinity chorus. Now you'll notice each of them have different controls. So I'll explain to you how I'm comparing them just so we can hear a bit of a, the difference between the different models. And I also have a pre 
effect chorus with the Ampeg liquefier that we'll talk about at the end. So what I've done here is I've set the speed to three, the depth to 10, and I have tried to leave everything as close as possible between the different effects. You'll notice here the chorus rate of three on the 70s chorus, we're in chorus mode. Spread at 10 to get the maximum stereo effect out of these. So again, plastic chorus rate at three, depth at 10, set to chorus. Um, and you'll notice the mix at them on all of them are at fit. You'll notice the mix on all of them are at 50%. Uh, again, the Ampeg liquefier rate of three, depth of 10. And the Trinity chorus rate of three, depth of 10, but this is a little different. And we'll talk about that in a second too. Uh, so I don't expect all of these to sound the same or even necessarily similar at those settings. It's just to kind of get the settings the same so we can listen to how these differ from one another. So again, here's the dry sound. And then I'm going to go through the different snapshots. We have chorus, which is the line six original, the seventies chorus, plastic chorus, liquefier and Trinity. And I'll just play a little bit and switch through this watch up here in the snapshot window to see which one we're on. Okay, so obviously very different sounds. Now that's not to say they couldn't be tweaked to sound very similar. Uh, they probably could, but you'll also notice different chorus effects have different abilities. You know, the wave shape control on this chorus effect that we have is very powerful and can really change the tone. You know, when we change that to the triangle shape and then uh, compare that to the plastic chorus. It kind of becomes a little more similar. So you can see how there are so many parameters gonna, that can affect how a particular chorus sounds. So something like the plastic chorus, we kind of see that we have a very particular tone kind of built into it with that wave shape that we can't really change, although we could take things like depth and rate. <laughs> and really alter that in different ways to really get dramatically different effects. Something like the 70s chorus allows us the ability to go from chorus mode, which kind of just has a set depth to it. We pick the rate and then it is what it is or we can go to vibrato mode. We have true and classic settings. On the plastic course, we are gonna have tone controls as we do on some of the other ones as well. The latest chorus we have is the Ampeg Liquifier, really an amazing chorus. Not as much tweakability, but just a beautiful sound. It's a dual chorus. We can choose single mode on it. Mm -hmm. 
kind of a real sucker for the dual mode on that. And then we also have the Trinity Chorus, which is really interesting and not really a fair thing to do to have this set with the rate at three and all of our depths at 10, because I think the magic in this lies in the fact that we can kind of alter these depths around in the stereo field. So we have a left, a center, and a right. <laughs> To give us much more sense of motion, I guess we could call it. We can actually boost certain left, center, and right depths. We have control over our low frequency oscillator. So it really is hard to compare all of these in any really reasonable way, simply because we can tweak them in all such different ways. And that's really going to probably be the determining factor as to what we consider the best for a particular situation. Do we need this tweakability of controlling three different depths throughout the stereo spectrum, or do we want something just much more simple that we can set and play? It's really going to be a big factor in what we choose. Do we want something like the plastic chorus that sounds like it can get kind of wacky, or do we want to just go with the normal Line 6 original chorus where we have a lot of control? We have the tone control as well as the actual wave shape that we can control. Or do we want something like the 70s chorus, which is just basically when set to chorus, but we have a chorus rate and that's it, and it's really simple to get set up and a very classic sound to it. very easy to dial in. Maybe we want that, or maybe we want the ability to really tweak to our heart's content. So that's some of the sounds we have. I got to say one of my favorites, and I think, and it's kind of been my go-to since it came out, is the Ampeg liquefier. I really, there's just something about this I really like with settings like the, the rate down. And a fairly high depth. just really has a nice sound to me. So if that would be my go-to and probably my quote unquote best for a lot of situations. Now, one question I do get a lot is where should I put the chorus effect? Should I have it before? Should I have it after the amp? And well, there's one really big determining factor here. If we put it before the amp, the amp is going to end up summing this to mono. So we are going to lose that big lush stereo effect if we are actually recording or performing in stereo. And just to give you an idea of that, I have the mono version of the Ampeg liquefier uh, before the amp here. And then I have, let me just get these settings back so they're the same on both. As we can see, they're now set the same. So let's take a listen to the mono version before the amp. And that's going to be Snapshot 7 here versus the stereo version after the amp. Now, some folks might say, yeah, but you have a mono version before the amp. Well, okay, I can change that to stereo also, but all that's going to happen then, we'll get these settings back to equivalent to the other version, all that is going to happen then is that this is going to, I'll even put the spread on 10, this is going to be summed to mono once we go before the amp. So we'll take a listen to that again. We'll start with the stereo version.
If you're just playing in mono, uh, it's going to really be up to us where we want to put it. I usually end up having chorus effect after my amp, but I mean, there are no rules. If you like the sound of it before, especially maybe when using a distorted sound, it's going to be really up to us to try it out. And in the Helix, it's so easy. You know, drag it before, drag it after, put one instance before, one instance after, and snapshot between them two so you can just really hear the difference and, and choose the one, use your ears, choose the one that your ears tell you is the right one. But my normal choice is to have it after. All right, so to answer the question, which is the best chorus effect in the Helix? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be up to us. I just wanted to show you the difference between them. Uh, number one, we have to watch for tweakability. Uh, maybe we need the ability to tweak things a certain way and we want to be able to control that that wave shape of the LFO. Uh, maybe we want to have con separate control over depth in the stereo field and something like a Trinity chorus would be beautiful. Maybe we just want something very simple like the 70s chorus where we just set the rate and off to the races. Or maybe we want something like the Ampeg liquifier, which you know has our rate and depth control, uh, but is a dual chorus, which has a very sweet sound. And that dual chorus being that it creates two copies of the original and then processes those in different ways. Usually, and I'm not sure in this case, they flip the phase on one of them and then we get this beautiful kind of lush sound out of that. So it's really going to be up to us, but I just think the important point is going into it with the knowledge of what is actually happening to the sound and what these things are doing is going to help us to maybe be able to make our selection of what's going to be the most suitable for our situation. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and staying with me through this. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use or enjoyment out of watching it. And also please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. I'll be back really soon with some more. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.